Well, hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. And if it's your first time here, well, welcome. Tonight, I am going to be taking a red-eye flight on an Airbus A330 from Seattle to Atlanta. And I'll be flying in the Delta One cabin, even though it's called first class. Come along with me for a great flight to Atlanta. Well, I've got a little bit of time on my hands, as I usually do before most of my flights. So I'm just going to walk around the airport for a little bit. The last time I took a red-eye flight was on a 737. It was from Seattle going to Cincinnati, and it was a little bit difficult to sleep. The seat didn't recline all the way, but tonight I will have a lie flat. The SeaTac Airport is a good walking airport, and walking can lead to sleepiness, so I'm doing what it takes to try to be able to get some shut-eye tonight. So I'm just walking around the airport, taking in all the sights. I've got some time before my flight. A little bit about my story. My final destination is New York LaGuardia. There are no flights from Seattle to LaGuardia. I'm actually flying to LaGuardia because as you all know, I love the airport and I want to make more videos of the approach to LaGuardia, but I can't get there from Seattle. So I'm connecting in Atlanta. I'm doing the red eye to Atlanta and then I'm continuing on to LaGuardia airport. But this video is all about the flight from Seattle to Atlanta on the Airbus A330. Let's continue walking around the airport. I'm actually going to bring you into the Delta Sky Club. Hawaii, that would be nice, but that's not happening today. Instead, it's New York LaGuardia, but those approaches to LaGuardia are just absolutely awesome. Now, I know many of you have had questions on how to gain access to the Delta Sky Club. I have access because I'm a diamond medallion. My access tonight has absolutely nothing to do with flying in the Delta One or first class, whatever you want to call it, cabin. I'll take a few minutes to show you around the Sky Club and grab something to eat. Well, I just made it into the Delta Sky Club, very nice entranceway, and I'm going upstairs to the mezzanine level to get a nice overview of the entire facility. Why stay down there when you can be up here? There's no one here. But I do have to say, I really like the setup of this Sky Club. It's very theatrical. You've got the stage out there with the aircraft. I'm currently on the mezzanine and people sitting in the orchestra level down there have access to the food. It's a great show. Well, I just realized that if I need the food, I do need to go downstairs first. I kind of just walked right up here. So I'm gonna go check out the buffet. This club has a wide variety of hot and cold dishes as well as drinks. And with the goal of sleeping on my cross country flight, I tried to get in as much as possible to induce sleepiness. And looking for a relaxing space, I brought my food upstairs where I was able to enjoy my food and drink with less people around me and in a setting where I could admire some artwork. All right, well, it's time for our departure briefing today. Whether you're sitting in the Delta One cabin, Comfort Plus, or the main cabin, all passengers are going to experience our departure. And that's what's the most exciting part tonight. We'll be taking off on runway 16, probably 16 left, and then we'll be flying to the south, then making a left-hand turn towards the direction of our destination, Atlanta. We're flying from one coastal state to another. It's a long flight. And I'm now ready to leave the Sky Club so I can do a little bit of more walking around this very vast terminal before I locate my A330. Well, this is actually kind of appropriate. I'm in Seattle and I'm going to New York City where you can find the Hudson. But one good thing is that this is a very, very spacious area. There's plenty of room. There's no overcrowding here. An A330 is a wide body heavy jet and it accommodates a lot of people. And you really don't feel overcrowding here. All right, at least I got a little bit of a glimpse of the aircraft while boarding. Oh, 
I'm on board the A330. It's a 300 series. I love this aircraft. All right, I'm on board and this is gonna be my home for the next couple of hours. And speaking of home, I'm gonna to try to make myself as comfortable as possible. I brought my own pillow with me. So the biggest issue is the windows are quite far from the seat, but the seat is very, very comfortable. This seat is not ideal for photography outside. Look how far I had to bend forward to see out. This is what I don't like about the seating arrangement. There's a window here, but it's just not ideal for looking out. But again, this is a red eye, and I do need to at least try to doze off. Will I or will I not sleep? We'll see. In addition to the window, I'll be keeping an eye on the IFE, specifically the moving map and information about the flight, if I don't fall asleep. So let's get the flight started. Arm door three, please. As the boarding door closed, flight attendants played the standard safety video, and in the flight deck, the pilots reached out to Seattle Ramp Control for clearance to push back on the ramp, and we were told to push back right away, as there was no traffic in our way. Inside the cabin, the ambient lights were set to a pleasant shade of purple, and once the tug was removed from this heavy jet, we moved under our own power. Leaving from a gate at the far end of the A-gates, we had to taxi around the satellite S-gates in a counterclockwise direction. This is a tight space, but the ramp controllers monitor us before they ask us to contact ground control. Delta 45 heavy, Seattle ground, runway 16 left, tank severe, bravo. Okay, that transmission was not the easiest to hear the pilot, but the controller has told us that we can take Taxiway Bravo all the way northbound to runway 16 left. It was a straight run with little traffic, which helps for an on-time arrival. I'm enjoying the view out the window of the ramp space, and the people on the other side of the airplane can enjoy the runway views. That is, if they would keep their window shades open. As we got closer to the runway, the pilot asked the ground controller to switch to the tower controller frequency. Delta 45 for New York, monitor tower, 119 good day. Once we switched frequencies, the tower controller told us to immediately line up and wait on the runway. Delta 45 heavy tail tower, 16 left, line up and wait. Line up and wait, 16 left, At the far northern end of Taxiway Bravo, we joined Taxiway Charlie, which leads to runway 16 left, the inboard runway in a set of three parallel runways. We're starting off at the beginning of the 11,901 foot long runway, and we're currently at 432 feet above sea level. 
Despite Seattle being a port city, the airport is situated on nearby land that's higher up. We are all ready for the tower controller to issue us takeoff clearance and warn the aircraft behind us about our wake turbulence as a heavy jet. LA 45 heavy, 1106, runway 6 left, clear, clear, clear. Seattle 3565, Seattle Tower, Cosh, Mike, Torrance, departing every Airbus, Spot, Trash, 16 left, line of point. Once we become airborne, the tower controller hands us off to the departure controller. Delta 845 Heavy, connect for Delta 845 Heavy, switching, good night. Let's check in with the Seattle departure controller. Delta 845 Heavy is uh, with you at a one and a half or seven thousand. Delta 845 Heavy, Seattle departure, give me a radar contact, climb maintain 900,000. Climb maintain 900,000, Delta 845 Heavy. The captain reduces power after takeoff as we check in with the controller who's located at an off-site airport location. We're given clearance to climb to 9,000 feet on this calm evening in Seattle. Our Airbus A330 is performing well as I take in the view of the right wing. We're on a departure procedure called the Mountain One Departure, which requires us initially to climb out on a heading of 165 degrees, which is nearly runway heading. We need to hold this heading for about five miles as we head to a point in the sky called Nietzsche near the community of Redondo, which is in the boundary of Des Moines here in King County. Once at Nietzsche, we turn to the left to a heading of 71 degrees. We'll then get clearance to proceed on course to a point in the sky called Normie, and from there, we can proceed on to the rest of the route. Normie is located over Ragnar, Washington in King County. Our pilot wants to ensure that we need to be on the 71 degree heading before going to Normie, so he asks the controller who comes back with verification of the course and that there's traffic in the sky nearby. Mark the Delta 845 heavy. Delta 845 heavy, go ahead. This was a little confusing. Do you want us on the uh, 071 heading or do you want us direct to uh, Normie? Delta 845 heavy, you know, continue on that heading. There's an aircraft there at the. Uh... 11, move to 10 o'clock, about three more miles. I'll have you go direct Normie and climb you up. Okay, thank you very much. Tally Hill on that traffic. Delta 845 heavy will maintain this heading. It never hurts to verify any doubts that you might have, and that is exactly what the pilot did. And since we have the traffic in sight by reporting Tally Ho to the controller, the controller moves us further along to Normie. Delta 845 heavy, maintain visual separation with the Emperor Jet there at 10 o'clock. See direct Normie, climb and maintain 15,000. We'll maintain visual and uh, direct normie up to 900,000, Delta 845 heading. Delta 845 heading, 15,000, 15,000. Correction, 15,000, Delta 845 heading. It's not easy looking out. Meanwhile, inside the cabin, I'm struggling to look out the window since it's so far away from the seat, but I do need to get some sleep. Once I land in Atlanta tomorrow morning, I have another flight to catch up to LaGuardia. So, as the departure controller hands us off to the high altitude center controller, I decline any meal or drink service and immediately prepare my life flat seat for a few hours of slumber on this flight. Delta 845 Heavy Contact Center 127.05, good night. 2705 for Delta 845 Heavy, thanks for helping.
For the first time ever, I fell asleep on a cross-country flight because of the live flat seat, and I didn't film any of the in route phase. I wanted to be alert for our arrival into Atlanta, and since my final destination is LaGuardia, I checked the winds for the New York area at the time of my arrival, and I'm anticipating flying on the park visual approach to runway 31 during daylight conditions. So let's fast forward to approaching the Georgia area where I wake up, I take a quick trip to the forward lavatory, and then return to my seat for the approach to ATL. As we near our destination, our pilots obtain local airport information from ATIS. Here are some clips from the current ATIS. Atlanta Airport Arrival Information Kilo 10520. Wind 220 at Niner. Visibility 7. Ceiling 6. Hundred broken. Temperature 17. 2.16. Altimeter breeze 017. Feeling variable between 500 and 700. Simultaneous approaches are in progress. ILS runway 27 left approach. ILS runway 28 approach. Notice to airmen. Runway 26 right close. Runway 26 left close. Now that we have a good idea of the local conditions, we are all set to land. The north complex of runways is closed today, so we'll land in the south complex on runway 27 left, which is in a westerly direction. So we'll pass by the airport to its north, then turn right to the south, then right again to the west to land. This all happens after flying the standard terminal arrival procedure. The right turns that you see here are the turns that are being made to bypass the airport, then come back around to line up with the runway under the control of the Atlanta Approach Controller. Once we're fully lined up and established on the landing system, we contact the control tower. Tower warning, Delta 845 Heavy, approaching the depot. Delta 845 Heavy, last tower, good morning, wind 21010, Boeing 27 left, to the landing, you're following the region of zero on two and a half mile final. Delta 845 Heavy, clear to land on 27 left.
As we slow down, we clear the runway to the right and are asked by the control tower to hold short of the parallel runway which is being used for departing traffic. Day 45, heavy hold short of runway 27 right at Tango. 7 right at Tango, Delta 845. Runway 27 right, the parallel runway, is being used as the departure runway, and as soon as the most recent departure takes off, the ground controller instructs us to cross that runway and then contact ground control for taxi instructions to get to the ramp. Day 45, heavy cross, runway 27 right at Tango. Join Lima, ground 0.9, 14.9. Then join Lima, 0.9, Delta 845, heavy. Well, that concludes my red eye from Seattle to Atlanta. While I always feel bad about closing my eyes on an airplane, I needed to sleep because of a busy schedule and I absolutely needed to be alert for my next flight to LaGuardia. The seat on this A330 was very comfortable and really helped me get some much needed rest. Welcome to Atlanta. Well, thanks so much for watching. It was a great flight. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed already and hit that like button. I'll see you again very soon. And make sure you stay tuned for my next video where I take you from Atlanta to LaGuardia where I strategically choose a seat on the left-hand side of the airplane because my flight is going to fly the Park Visual Runway 31 Approach. You'll see what that's all about.